Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. In this video we are going to discuss about morphology of flowering plants. Morphology means morpho means external, logy means study. Flowering plants are all angiosperms. In kingdom plantae, the most evolved kingdom is the angiosperm. There are more than 3 lakh species of angiosperm. Whenever you study the external structure of an organism, it is called as morphology. And when you study the internal structure, that is dissected part of an organism, it is called anatomy. Let's first understand the parts of typical flowering plant. Any typical flowering plant has two important parts, the underground part and the aerial part. Underground part is root, which is homogeneous, means same. Aerial part is the shoot, which is heterogeneous, it means it is different. When I say different, it means shoot has stem, leaf, flower, fruit, birds, etc. Let's first draw a typical plant and label all the parts of the plant in detail. So here I have drawn the stem, the root system. The stem is going to bear leaf, flower, fruit, bud. It has nodes and internodes. So the underground part which is homogeneous in nature is nothing but root. Root always arises from the radical and the shoot always arises from the plumule. So we have root system and we have shoot system. It has apical bud, node, internode, leaves, flower, fruits and even bud. So the root is homogeneous in nature. It is below the soil. And above the soil is shoot which is heterogeneous. There are two major parts of any plant. One is a vegetative part and second is a reproductive part. Vegetative part are mainly concerned with vital functions or important functions which is helping in the growth of root stem and leaf. The reproductive parts are concerned with sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction takes place only through flower. Let's talk about root now in detail. The characteristics of root, first of all, seed, when it germinates, the first part that emerges out is the radical and radical gives rise to root. And after root, what comes out is the shoot. So, root is descending part of the plant axis, positively geotropic. Geo means soil, tropic means movement. It moves towards the soil. It is positively hydrotropic moving towards the water and it is negatively phototropic because it moves away from the sunlight. It develops from radical of seed. When we talk about root, it is non-green cylindrical. It is having all similar organs endogenously. So I can say it is homogeneous in nature. There is no dissimilar organs in root right like stem, flower, fruit, birds etc. Let's understand the parts of typical root. The root mainly consists of root cap. It has region of meristem that is cell division. It has region of cell elongation. It has root hair region and even it has region of maturation. This is region of root cap. When we talk about region of root cap, remember it is multicellular cap like structure. It secretes mucilage. Mucilage is a sticky substance, sticky liquid or fluid which helps in lubricating the soil so that root can go deep into the soil. The aquatic plants, they don't have root cap. Instead of root cap, they have root pockets which is filled up with air which helps them to float on water. Example, hydrophytes, icornia and pistia. This is the region of cell division. Region of cell division is also called as meristematic region. It is a small area, 1 millimeter. It is protected by root cap. Meristematic tissues, here the cells are dividing continuously and this region of cell division helps in longitudinal growth of root. This is region of cell elongation. When we talk about region of cell elongation, it increases the length of the root. It helps in the absorption of minerals. This is the region of root hair. Now in dicot there are three types of root. We say primary, secondary and tertiary root. Primary root is the main root which arises from radical. 
the root which arises from primary is secondary and the one which arises from secondary is tertiary. It has filiferous layer also known as epiblema. The tertiary root is responsible for absorbing water. Lifespan of tertiary root is only 10 to 15 days. This is the region of maturation. The region of maturation helps in the growth in the girth of the root that is the xylem and phloem. So I can say maturation is increasing the major part of the root and it is thick walled impermeable to water. It helps in fixation and anchorage to the soil. This is what you should know about the different parts of the root. Let's talk about the functions of root. The very first function roots helps in fixation or even anchorage to soil. Root helps in absorption of water and minerals. Roots they play a very important role. In some cases if the conditions become unfavorable the roots will undergo modification because survival is the ultimate goal for all the plants and animals. So it modifies for food storage example carrot, radish, beetroot, sweet potato. Sometimes the roots become green in color to perform the function of photosynthesis example tenospora, trappa, orchids. They also come against the ground against the gravity for exchange of gases example rhizophora soneratia some roots are parasitic example cascuta some roots they modify for vegetative reproduction example sweet potato some are present in the air hanging example orchids they have a special tissue called velamen there are different types of roots mainly two tap root fibrous root even there is adventitious root. Tap root arises from the radical. Fibrous root arises from the base of the stem. And adventitious root arises from any part except radical. So here in the diagram we will be discussing about the tap root and the fibrous root. Tap root develops from the radical of an embryo. Tap root it helps in deep penetration in the soil. It arises during seed germination from the radical. Fibrous root develops from any part of the seed except embryo or except radical. When you talk about fibrous root, they don't have primary, secondary or tertiary root. Tap root, the main root is the primary, secondary and tertiary. As we studied now that the tertiary root helps in absorption of water. But in fibrous root there is no primary, no secondary, no tertiary root. Tap root is mostly seen in case of dicot plants. Fibrous root mostly seen in case of monocot plant. It grows vertically downward deep into the soil. Whereas fibrous root grows horizontally. Roots are arranged in acropetal succession. In case of fibrous root. It is arranged in basipetal succession. When I say acropetal, it means that the new roots are at the periphery and mature roots are at the center. Tap root is also known as true root. Fibrous root is also known as false root. Tap root is seen in dicot. Fibrous root is seen in monocot. Example, mustard, brassica, sunflower for tap root. Maize, wheat, sugarcane for fibrous root.